Today, let's get a real intuition for the integral of sine x. Normally, when you learn about integrals, people teach it as at the area under the curve. And the problem is this makes everything very generic. It doesn't matter what the curve is, the integral is just the area. And you're kind of losing the specific intuition that you might have. So you're just turning everything into rectangles and adding them up, but there's kind of a meaning there. So um, the idea behind sine x is to really understand the individual components. The integral itself is basically a fancy multiplication. I have a different video on this, but the idea is that any integral problem is at its heart a multiplication problem. The units end up working out as if you had multiplied. The only difference is that integrals allow things to change. So when you multiply three times four, those are both staying the same. But three times one plus two plus three plus four, that second quantity was changing along, so we can't quite multiply. We have to do this addition along the way, which is the integral. But if the number four stayed the same, we would multiply. So that's what integrals lets us do. Sine is essentially a percentage. So um, in the case of a triangle, the sine might be the percentage of the height. So we have an angle, and there's some percent height that we have. But the key concept here is the sine is just a number. It's like 0 0.75, right? It's just a percentage that we use to modify some length. And what is that length? That is dx. So dx is a tiny, infinitely small piece of our path. So what's interesting is on the circle, our path is a circumference. So dx is kind of just a little nudge along that circumference. Uh, there's an intuition that a circle is really just a polygon with many sides, right? If you have four sides, you have a square, six sides, a hexagon. If you have thousands, millions of sides, you start looking more and more like a circle. So dx is essentially one of those little pieces along the perimeter. Um, and the idea with calculus is that you can take something that has many sides and eventually it behaves like a circle in the limit. Separate video for that. But the idea is that we can take these intuitions together, right? So this is better than just area under the curve. We're saying, okay, we have this multiplication, we have a percentage, and we have a length. What's going to happen? Well, the idea is that as we move along a circle, there's sine, which is the vertical percentage, and cosine is the horizontal. And again, sine is just a percentage, 0 0.75. But in this particular arrangement, like this, sine is tracking this percentage. Now, when we move along the circle, this red line, that's the change that we made. And that change is actually a vertical change and a horizontal change. And in this case, the horizontal change, so to speak, is actually tracked by sine, right? We're taking the similar triangle and rotating it. So sine is now, as a percentage, tracking this. So we have dx, and let's say this is 0.75. This length here is 75% of the red. And then there's also the, the vertical change, but we're not tracking that currently. So essentially sine dx, when we see the integral of integral sine dx, that's basically saying, I want to start tracking all of these little green pieces. Okay, so as we move along a circle, we're getting these kind of green pieces, sine x, dx. I want to add all of those up. What does that look like? It looks like this. As I move, I'm getting kind of a green piece each time, right? And again, the percentage might change. So here it might be 75%, here it's 90%, here maybe it's only 10% of the, of the dx length. But the idea is that we're basically getting these green lengths, and they all add up into the total distance, right? So this plus this plus this plus this. We're being dropped off and we're starting again. We're being dropped off and starting again, dropped off and starting again. So what's happening is the integral of sine x dx is essentially tracking how much horizontal motion we had. That's all it's doing. It's saying, okay, if you move from this point to this point, how far did you go horizontally? And I can actually eyeball this. I can say, okay, if I move from here to here, I moved one unit horizontally. Right from here to here, this was one unit. If it went all the way around, this is two units. So in my head, I can say, okay, the integral of sine from zero to pi, let's say all the way, is two. I can just, I can just do that. Here, could you say, oh, I'm just going to eyeball the area under the curve here. This is two units of area. All of this is two. This is one unit, and this is another unit. You can't eyeball it, but here you actually understand what's happening. So that's the key intuition. I don't want to memorize the integral of sine and have to work out the calculus myself. I want to be able to visualize it. Now, if you actually compute it mathematically, from the rules of calculus, we know that the integral of sine is negative cosine. If you actually try to use negative cosine, you get this funny 
think here. She said, okay, the integral of sine is negative cosine evaluated from zero to pi, which means we need to plug in pi and subtract the zero. We get all these negative signs, negative cosine of pi minus negative cosine of zero, which is negative, negative one minus negative one, which is one plus one equals two. This is crazy. The reason this is happening is because we're basically converting this path, which is going from right to left in the positive direction, right? These are positive changes. We're kind of converting it into this left to right area into the curve. So when we do that conversion, we have all these negative signs. And so the subtraction ends up being really cumbersome. It's hard to do this in your head without making a mistake. But when you look at this, you can say, oh, the, hor the total horizontal distance moved from here to here was two. Yeah, that's the net change. So you can really understand things a lot more intuitively. So this is really the, the intuitions that I wish I had. And unfortunately, again, area under the curve is a nice visualization in general. But for specific functions and things like sine, which you use all the time, I think it's good to have a secondary intuition, which is what's actually happening for this particular function. With that, happy math.